What's up guys? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh exclusive. Today, we're bringing you the answers to your questions. Thank you so much to all of you who commented on my last video and provided a burning question that you wanted answered. I compiled some of the most interesting and thoughtful questions that I could find and I'm going to answer them for you here. So let's just get started. First question, and he asks what my top five work or professional sense would be, something for a professional environment. First of all, what I would define as a work scent would be something that's not too loud, undeniably pleasant to everybody. So that would be something relatively on the safe side, sophisticated and not too sweet. And in no particular order, my top five would be Bleu de Chanel, fresh, kind of aquatic, not gonna offend anybody. Yves Saint Laurent's Loam, smell it and you'll know if you haven't smelled it, it speaks for itself. Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver, one of my all-time favorites since Givenchy's Gentleman Only. Beautiful, woody, and kind of lavender fresh, soapy, slightly sweet, very masculine scent. And finally, Versace Pour Homme, a little bit more sporty, more of a summer and warm weather scent, but still very bright, citrusy, fresh. Again, not going to offend anybody. Those would be my top five work scents. Again, no order, just... I would choose from those. Now, Martin Arvidson, I hope I said your name right. Uh, you've been following the channel since the beginning, as far as I can see. And I appreciate you, man. Really. Thank you. And he asks, tell us about the trumpet. When did it start? Do you play in any groups? So I don't know if most of you guys know, but I am a musician. I've basically been a musician my entire life. I started playing the piano at age seven. I picked up the trumpet at age 12 and kind of started really digging into jazz at age 13 and have been doing that ever since. So I play in a lot of different groups of varying musical styles, mostly based in Chicago and the Chicago area because that's where I live. And, and yeah, I have a lot of fun doing that. It keeps me busy and it keeps me paying my bills a lot of the time. So now we have a question from Jonathan Skeen, who's a college student at Purdue and wants to know some fragrances for the social environment or night out that will be unique, that'll perform well and smell attractive slash seductive. If I were to pick three scents to choose from that kind of fit that criteria for you, Jonathan, and anyone else who might be interested, I would go with Dior Homme Parfum. Check out my review on that. I'll leave the link down below. Thierry Mugler's Amen Pure Malt. Just a beautiful, kind of chocolatey, boozy, strong fragrance. And it's, it's loud and people will know that you're in the room and it's so pleasant. And finally, I would go with Parfums de Marly Layton, their newest release. I actually just acquired a sample from a fellow reviewer here in the community, Israel Gonzalez. Uh, thanks, bro. Really appreciate you. Thanks for sending me that sample. I love the scent. I've only been using it for a few days, but it has proven to be a real mass pleaser from this house. Uh, but it still has this unique edge to it. I would check it out. And if you want to check out Israel's work and his channel, his channel is called Dollars and Cents. I'll link to him down below. Movie House Fire wants to know what I do for a living. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> no. Uh, basically, I'm a musician. I'm also a music educator. I'm currently a student, so I guess that would be my occupation right now. I'm working on my doctorate in jazz studies. Uh, currently about halfway through the program, maybe a little bit more than halfway. I'm down at the University of Illinois, and I plan to, to teach at the university level and to continue to perform and I also compose a lot so that's ultimately what I want to do is write teach and play but right now I'm a student and I kind of teach and I play so we'll see where it goes Webster Kali writes when did you become a frag head and what were your first fragrances at the time so basically uh, I became obsessed with smelling good I guess at a young age uh, probably around age 12 or 13 um, that's when I got to junior high and I was wearing at the time bod man 
fragrances and acts and tag and pretty much everyone else, what everyone else was wearing. Uh, later on, when I got to high school, I ended up acquiring Chanel Allure Homme, uh, which at the time, I don't think I was quite ready for it. I liked it, but it seemed too mature for me. But I wore it anyway, just because it was a fragrance and I got it for free. I also got Aqua Di Gio a little bit later and never truly liked it, honestly. To this day, I'm not crazy about it. I love the Profumo version, but the original, for I mean, forgive me, uh, I'm not crazy about it. It's just, it almost smells like a toilet to me. That's what it reminds me of. But if you love it, you love it for a reason because it is a great fragrance objectively. So that's just me. Uh, and later on, I even picked up a fragrance that probably would be seen a tier lower and that's David Beckham's signature. And I forgot about it and picked up another bottle about a year ago when I remembered it. I'm like, oh, I remember I like that fragrance. Let me pick it up. And I loved it, I still have it, but I'm not crazy about it now that I've smelled a lot of other fragrances of higher quality and I can sense how synthetic it is. Sorry, David. And I didn't truly start becoming, I guess, interested in the art of fragrances until about a year ago, roughly. So that's when it kind of got heavy for me, at least up here, and I didn't take action until later on. Jeff writes, why is your brother so handsome? <laughs> Jeff is a funny guy. Thanks, Jeff, for commenting. You'll be seeing more of Jeff later. Darren Newell writes, What are some rose-based scents that you've tried and like so far, if any? Honestly, I haven't tried many of rose-based scents. Not that I know of, really. I'm not super keen on that note. Um, but the ones that I can think of now are Yves Saint Laurent's L'Homme Ultime, which I like. It's kind of, it's nice. It's okay. It's spicy, uh, it's floral and kind of fresh, you know, it's all right. It's cool. Uh, and also Tom Ford Noir de Noir, which I am not currently a fan of, to be honest. I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance, but I would definitely not see myself wearing that. So. Rose is something that I would need more time with. Iyas Ahmed asked me a lot of questions and you'll see them on the screen. I'm just gonna blast out his questions. What are your most complimented fragrances? A fragrance you really hate. Three fragrances you would love to have. Your favorite frag reviewer. Best flanker. Vintage frag you'd love to own. And most sexy scents for men and women. Okay, I'm gonna go through these as I can. Most complimented frags, I'm going to save that for a future list. You have to wait for that one. A fragrance you really hate, you're all going to hate me for saying this if you know this fragrance. And I'll explain myself in an upcoming review, but a fragrance I really hate is Tom Ford Noir. Come at me. Three fragrances I would love to have right now. Guerlain's L'Homme Ideal, the EDT, which I actually have a sample of coming, thanks to a fellow community member. Perfumes de Marley Herod, I only have a sample of that. Would love to have a full bottle someday if it wasn't $140. And Boy's 1920 Dolce Di Giorno. Uh, I actually haven't smelled that yet, but from what I've read about it and the way that the note breakdown looks, I want to get my nose on it so bad, so I look forward to doing that at some point soon. My favorite frag reviewer, I can't pick just one. I can list off some of my first inspirations when I kind of started watching fragrance videos and thinking about getting into it, into reviewing at least. Uh, that would be some of the obvious ones. Jeremy, Steven from Red Adolescence, Cody from Drac Doc, Killer Frags, and one of the guys who I loved and doesn't review anymore is actually Reggie. Uh, his channel was called Lil Angry. And if you've seen him, you'll know what I mean. Uh, this guy, he just had a great demeanor about his fragrance lists and he always seemed to have like the biggest bottle sizes for all of his fragrances. Like this is him. So guys, this is a fragrance that I can't really do without. Uh, I love this so much. It's Tidy Cats and I had to get the 1000 ml bottle you know, 
I just use it so much I might as well I just figured I'd get the big one so this is my number one fragrance for the summer that's tidy cats clumping litter <laughs> I'm sorry I'm silly moving on best flanker my favorite flanker right now would have to be John Bravado's vintage uh, whatever the best one is is subjective obviously but that's what I love right now a vintage frag that I would love to own Jacques Foth Pour L'Homme it's actually in the mail you might be seeing a review on that soon it was too cheap to pass up thanks Jeremy <laughs> Uh, the most sexy or alluring scents for men and women. I'll probably save that for a list of most seductive or attractive fragrances. I don't know. We'll see about that. Okay. Moving on to Mike Souza, who asks, How and when did you become passionate about fragrances? Again, I became passionate about fragrances uh, about a year ago, I would say. I just started wondering what makes up a fragrance and when I kind of got those answers my mind was blown and that kind of sucked me in because there's a lot I didn't know about it so it was the art itself that pulled me in for what it was David Hayes asks how many hours a week do you put into fragrances honestly I never really thought about it in terms of smelling fragrances it depends on the week uh, maybe up to an hour total um, I'm always just trying to smell and pick up new things and whether it's out or whether it's my own collection whatever in terms of research on fragrances how much time that is too much <laughs> final question why are you stupid asks what's your favorite rainy day fragrance I would have to say Tom Ford's gray vetiver it works for anything but if I had a go-to for the rainy day which I don't know if I quite have at the moment it would be that it's just fresh and clean and kind of reminds me of clean water in a way it, I guess I don't know I'm kind of stretching it but love that one so those are the answers to your questions thank you again for those of you who decided to ask uh, we'll be doing more of these in the future and I have a couple of really exciting reviews coming up I will be reviewing another Guerlain fragrance soon I'll be reviewing another Givenchy fragrance very soon and I will also be reviewing this Jacques de Fat fragrance real soon. And many more to come after that. I have other lists in mind of different varieties. So I hope you guys will stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Share this video if you like it. Like this video if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. But you don't have to do that. You can just leave. I won't get mad. You can just... Peace. And... Uh, Follow me on my other networks. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Links down below for that. Let's stay connected. Peace. I'll see you guys in the next one.